folks. Welcome to Wednesday night in the upper room. I'm so happy to be alive today. What a time to be alive. Wouldn't, wouldn't Paul and the apostles of old been happy to be alive today? You know, there is so much going on in the world today, but we should not be surprised. We should be able to keep the faith and, and trust God right in the middle of all this going on. Uh, I was just going over the message. I was going to continue with spiritual warfare. And, uh, and, and it occurred to me that where are we at now? Where are, where are we? What, what, why are we so, so surprised at what's going on in the world? Well, Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 3, you've heard this before, but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous, that means hard and, and painful, sometimes furious and, or fierce and grievous and hard to deal with. Well, we're, we're, we're right there, but we're still blessed in the middle of it. Goes on to say, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying his power. You know, somebody can be going to church and deliver just like what this Paul has just described. And we may know some from in the, in the nation today, right? And from such people turn away. Now, what does Paul continue to say? He goes on to say um, in verse 10, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at, at Lystra, which what persecutions I endured and out of them all, the Lord delivered me. I mean, you know, in the midst of all the trouble going on today, the Lord will, can and will deliver you. Goes on to say, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. If we're living a life, putting out the gospel, doing what we're supposed to do, just know this, we will suffer persecutions. But he also said, evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from which you have learned them and that from a childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. Now, we may not know them from the childhood, but we have opportunity to know it now, right? <laughs> what the Scriptures say, uh, be known from the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise. How many of you want to be wise? We need to be have wisdom today uh, to live our life. Wise for salvation goes on to say through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man or the woman of God may be, a, be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Well, we're living in that time today and we shouldn't be afraid, but we should be equipped. We should be uh, a battle ready. That was the first uh, couple weeks ago. And then last week I talked about being armed and dangerous. Well, we're going to go back and look at Ephesians chapter 6. Now, if you want to hear a, a little better teacher on this, you can go hear Keith Moore because he's doing the same thing. D give no place to the devil. It's a long series. I didn't realize he was doing the full armor of God the last two weeks until I got it on my podcast. But that's all right. I'm, a lot of you don't hear Keith Moore, but you should. Go over there and hear what Keith has to say. But in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, he's saying, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Listen, we can't fight this fight without, in our own means and our own abilities. We have to have something that's far greater. The greater one who lives in us is it, so we can overcome. Put on the whole what? The whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. Listen, we can't just go half dressed, you know. <laughs> right now, they don't let you. Can't go anywhere without a mask. Can't go. You can't go and uh, eat in most restaurants without shoes and a t-shirt on. Well, you we shouldn't go out into into the world this this devilish world that we live in, not being armed with the armor of God. And we know what Paul was referring to there. He's referring to as as uh, as kind of a metaphor of looking at a, a Roman soldier. And he likened it. But this is this armor is is a spiritual armor. This is something that arms us against what? That we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the trickery of the devil. 
the, the, the schemes of the devil, the deception of the devil. How many of you know it's, it, there is so much deception in the world today? But we're to, we're to know that and we're to resist the devil. Well, how we resist the devil? Submitting ourselves to God. Resist the devil and what it says, he will flee. So we have to know that, but there are, we have to be able to stand. Now he goes on to say, we wrestle not against what? We're not wrestling against, as much as I'd like to think we are, the physical person or pe people in this world. We're not. We're seeing, we're seeing things happen in our nation that many of us, I, I never expected what, what's going on today in our nation and, and uh, what's happening in our government. But we have to know the real perpetrator of that is Satan, the devil, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. See, we have to know that there's Satan. <laughs> he is called what? The master deceiver. I mean, even I just said uh, against the wiles of the devil, the trickery, the deception. Uh, uh, Jesus said over in Matthew 24, verse 14, he's talking about the end of the age or the end of time or end of the age when, uh, be, when we see all these things begin to happen. He said, take heed that no one, what, deceives you. Listen, <laughs> there is so many things in the world um, that, that will deceive us. And you know what? You can, you can hear somebody tell a lie over and over and over until you believe it's the truth. And many people will fight, fight you. And maybe we've been there. Maybe you've been there before. Fight you because you know that that's just the truth. How many people have heard, uh, uh, grew up and uh, maybe in a church or, or maybe knew somebody that was a Christian and, and, but they didn't have the full truth. And they said, well, you never know what God's going to do. And you never know what his will is for you. So you always pray, if it be thy will for healing and, uh, and different things that he says. No, the word of God is true. So we have to know what the truth is, or you can be deceived into thinking that. Many times, many times we've talked to, uh, well, a few of us have talked to different Christians that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit strong Christians in the area that they believe in, but they don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Well, uh, yeah, we believe that was something that happened, but it's passed away, or if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. Well, listen, he wants you to have everything he said in his word. He's not withholding any good thing. He's no respecter of persons. He's not respecting you or me tonight. He's saying, whosoever shall come unto me, hallelujah, will have what he says he can have. So it goes on to say, so we're to take up the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand in this evil day. What did he say? Paul said perilous times, hard times. Well, they can be, but how many of you know you can have the peace that passes understanding and you can have the joy of the Lord right in the middle of a troubled time, right in the middle of it. Now it's your choice and my choice. Because when he says over in Philippians, Paul said, Philippians, be anxious for nothing. But there is something you have to do. But with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your request known unto God and the peace that passes understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And before he even said that, you know what he said? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we can rejoice right in the midst of troubled times. So anyway, it goes on to say that we might be able to stand in that day. Now, we know what, what the Bible says. It goes on to say, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth. Now, put on that having put the, uh, that truth. How many of you know we need truth today like never before? We, but what is truth? The Bible says uh, right here, this, his word is truth. It says, if you abide in me, Jesus said, if you abide in me, eight, John 8, 31 and 32, if you abide in me, my word, if you abide in my word, I'm sorry, but in John 17, 17, it says your word is truth. So if you abide in the truth, amen, you are my disciples indeed. How much, you know, a disciple is not somebody that just occasionally reads their Bible or occasionally prays, or occasionally go to church. A disciple is a dis disciplined follower of Christ. One that's put everything, uh, uh, him ahead of everything else. Their relationship with God, their relationship with the word, their relationship with praying, 
It put it ahead of everything else. And it says, you shall know, and you shall know the truth. Boy, do we need it today. And the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you before you got saved didn't know about Jesus or maybe you heard a little bit about it, but you really didn't know the truth that he came to save you from our sin and died on a cross, rose again the third day and his blood washes away our evil past. We didn't know that, but boy, thank God. Once you know the truth, what do you do? You got saved and, and later filled with the Holy Spirit and you're walking in the truth now. Doesn't it make you feel good that you know the truth? Amen. There's so much... Uh, 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 deception in the world. Now, how did Jesus, how did Jesus defeat the enemy? You know, the battle really, like I've said before, is really in your mind many of the times. That's where the battle rides. It's either you're going to walk in peace or you're going to walk in, in fear and frustration. And we, the, the empire is what we decide to put, where we decide to put our, our faith in. Amen? How did Jesus... Uh, how did Jesus defeat the enemy? You know, when back in Luke, you can look in Luke chapter four, when he went up into the, uh, into the wilderness, the spirit of God took him into the wilderness to show him what was greater in him, what was in him that was in coming against him or he that's in the world. And Satan tempted him, what, three times and he kept tempting him. Where did he tempt him? Did, did he show up uh, in, in a red suit or, or with a pitchfork? No, he came to him in his mind and every time, Jesus would say this, how did he put him down? It is written, it is true. Here's the truth, Satan. And he defeated the enemy by that. We must have the spiritual armor on or you're no match for the devil. Now, it goes on to say, having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace, having our feet ready. What's that mean? Shod with the, the preparation. You're ready to go at any time. Wherever you go, you're ready to preach the gospel. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. Yes, you are. You've been given the ministry. Say this, I have a ministry. And that ministry is a ministry of reconciliation. Amen? Amen. God reconciling man, uh, uh, himself to man. Now he's given us that ministry. Jesus came to, to, to reestablish that bridge between God and man. Now it's our responsibility to go tell that Jesus paid the price that you've been reconciled to God, receive it in Jesus' name, amen? So we're to be ready to go praying. Uh, and then it goes on to say, taking the, uh, let's see where I'm at. And taking the shield of faith, which is you're able to squinch all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now I talked last week, listen, everybody has fiery darts. What's that? Something that it penetrates your mind, fear, anxiety, worry, cares, all the things that the enemy brings. How I many of you know it's always a counterfeit to what God brings? God brings peace and joy and righteousness and fullness of the Holy Spirit, amen? He provides all that we'd ever have need of. That's what he brings. So the, we have to keep our mind stayed upon him, but those fiery darts come at us. And so we take the helmet of salvation and a sword of the spirit, which is the word of God to defeat the enemy. When the enemy comes at you and says, hey, you're not going to make it. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. God has made a way that I can live and have and 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 move and have my being in Christ Jesus. I don't have to depend on what the world says. Do I like everything? Is absolutely not. Am I? I think about America right now. Am I a patriot? Do I love my country? Absolutely. And you know what? We're going to stand and we're going to come against some of the things that are being uh, uh, proposed and perpetrated on our nation, stand against it. But what do we want to do? We want to be hearing what the voice of God says. We're, we're to be in, uh, in communication with the Heavenly Father and knowing that we're living in a time where the gospel needs to get out. Amen? So then it goes on to say, take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, now, we're going to talk about what tonight, just for a few minutes here, what Paul is saying. Put on that armor so you can stand against the wiles of the devil, stand strong, and then what do you do? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Listen, praying uh, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and, and per, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm reading in Brother Hagin's book uh, uh, about prayer, 
He talks about various kinds of prayer. What are we talking about? He said there's different kinds of prayer, and I believe that's to be so. Various kinds of prayer for different kinds of things. All manner of prayer. Paul's saying, excuse me, pray with all sorts of prayer. The prayer of faith over in Matthew 21, 22. You can look these up for yourself. Matthew 11 or Mark 11, 24. This prayer always is based on what God's revealed in his word. So we have to know these things. Amen. The prayer of consecration. Dedicate our lives for God's use to go anywhere and do it and, and do what he tells us at anything and any time. Man, that's consecration. Lord, we, we, sometimes we may, you may have made that statement before. Lord, I'll do anything, go anywhere for you. But have you really? See, we need to consecrate ourselves to what God, put God first in your life and everything else seems to go much better, right? It will go better. The prayer of commitment, casting your cares upon the Lord. That's 1 Peter 5, 7. Committed to the things of God, knowing that he'll take those cares and ease your uh, anxieties and your pain and take those things away. The prayer of worship over in Luke 24, 52 and 53, Acts 13, 1 through 4. Acts 1, uh, 13, 1 through 4, talking about the, the prayer of worship. The prayer of agreement in Matthew 18 and verse 18 to 20. Uh, praying in the spirit, that means praying in tongues in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, verses 14 and 15. I mean, you know, it's important to pray in the spirit. Listen, I want to encourage you tonight, encourage you. Those of you who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, take it up a notch. Take it up a notch. That, the, you know, the scripture talks about praying in, in Romans 8, 26 and 27, talking about the spirit knows what to pray. And we may, I may look at that scripture in just a minute, but take it up a notch. We, we were talking about this Monday night at prayer. Uh, you want to get closer to God. You want to sense the heart of God. You want to be more compassionate. You want to be able to pray for the lost when you don't know how. Maybe it's relatives you have. Some, you, this, is, this is what Paul's saying today. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He said he prayed in the Holy Spirit and tongues more than we all. So listen, if he did it and, 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 and had to do it and build himself up, that's what Jude said, building yourself up, we have to do it. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Listen to the voice of God. You'll begin, to, you'll begin to grow closer to God. You'll begin to sense greater things in your life. Amen? Amen. The, the prayer of united prayer, that's Acts 4, 23 through 31. I, I would encourage you to go read that. That's where uh, Peter and John had just uh, healed the lame man. They went back to their own company after being interrogated and told not to speak about Jesus. How many of you know that could be a reality today in our nation? <laughs> but don't, uh, don't be surprised if it comes, but don't be fearful of it either. But they, go back and read that and then talks about what they prayed for. And then the prayer of supplication, which is a humble, heartfelt, fervent, and earnest prayer. Uh, over in Matthew 9, 37 and 38, and we pray that the laborers, this is when we pray for the lost. Listen, my friends, this is what we need to be praying for. Labors to go into the harvest because the fields are white for, for harvest. Praying for our nation and leaders. First Timothy chapter two, right in the first four or five verses there. Go, go and look at those. Begin to pray those things. And pr when you say, well, I don't feel like praying for this president or I don't feel, listen, go back and listen to Pastor Scott's message from Sunday. I don't always feel like it, but I guess the best thing to do is turn the TV off. Don't watch it and say, I'm praying for the, the president of this nation because we're commanded to do that. Pray in the Holy Ghost. God, if God could turn Saul of Tarsus around who was persecuting Christians on his way to Damascus, he can turn somebody else around today. Amen? Amen. I know I'm preaching a little bit there, but praying for one another. How many of you know we, our brothers and sisters need prayer? We shouldn't be divisive. We shouldn't be dis, uh, divi have division. We ought to be uh, uh, praying one for another, carrying one another's burdens. That means lifting them off. That's in James 5, 16. Intercessory prayer. And that means uh, briefly defined. It means intercession is standing in the gap between a person or persons for God's sake. Amen. And for our sake and for their sake. But in reality, most effective prayer, this I wrote, read this, read this from Pastor or uh, Brother Hagin's book. But in reality, the most effective prayer is prayer the Holy Spirit inspires, which is needed at the moment. 
<laughs> That's why it's important to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now, over in Revelation chapter uh, 1, verse 6, we've been made, the Bible says we meet. Oh, let me go on and finish this. And, and Paul says after that, praying with all the saints, and, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I might be open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Listen, what's Paul saying? I, wherever I go, I'm going to be preaching this gospel. So you pray for me that I might have utterance and have boldness. Now, I mentioned Acts chapter 4, and when Peter and John came back, he, uh, and, and they began to pray with, the, with their companions. Listen, you, listen, I've told you this before. I'm going to tell you again. Get around somebody that's walking in faith. <laughs> don't, don't get around the people that are grumbling and complaining and carrying on. Get around somebody that said, hey, we know it doesn't look good, but here's what God says. Let's pray that prayer. Amen. And they prayed in Acts chapter four that they look on their threats and, and give unto your servants with all, that all boldness we may speak the word of God. That's what Paul was saying there. He wanted to be able to speak the gospel. Wherever he went, he talked about people praying for him. So he, we, we have to know that we're to pray for Paul. Now we've been given the ability to do that. We've been called what? Kings and priests. Kings and priests. Chose, and what 1 Peter 2, 9 says, we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, his own special people that we may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We've been called out of the darkness to proclaim the light, bring the light, amen? Listen, Jesus is the eternal high priest forever at the right hand of God the Father making intercession for us. We're to call to pray for others. We're, to call, we're called to pray for those that go forth and we're called to, to pray for those around us. Amen? Amen. So we have to know that. Listen, somebody would say, well, what, what are we going to do? When's judgment going to fall? You know, I don't know. But I know over in Romans, <laughs> the Bible says uh, that, that, that uh, God is the, uh, he will vindicate it. He's, he's vengeance of mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. So I was talking with somebody uh, the other day and I was talking about that and it just came out of my mind or out of, up out of my mouth. I said, just like this, we pray and he repays. So listen, <laughs> let's do what he tells us to do this day and this hour, amen? So there's some other things we can do along that line. Uh, we're to be a, a spiritual warfare. There's supernatural provision of the Christian soldier. We're the constant spirit of prayer. Constant spirit of prayer. Listen, it says we are to pray, we're to arm ourselves, and then have great confidence and assurance and courage. That comes from a spirit of prayer. When we begin to pray, I'm telling you, you sense the presence of God when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, when you get to worship Him and magnify Him over other things going on in your life. This is a, it's a special time. You want to get rid of the cares and worries and fears? Start magnifying Him over them in Jesus' name. Amen? It goes on to say, we must pray, always pray. It says the soldier who is always is not always praying is not assured of God's protection. It goes on to say the Christian soldier must pray at all times to maintain a constant unbroken consciousness of God's presence and care. Now listen, uh, Colossians 4.2 says, Paul's writing this, he's writing to that, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. We're to be praying at all times. Secondly, he must, we must pray in the spirit. I just talked about that. And this is Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the spirit help, helps our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself make its intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And that he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit. Hallelujah because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We must be, it goes on to say, this is some commentary here, it must be sleepless in prayer. Sometimes they say, you know, we, we wear ourselves out doing all kinds of other things and not spending much time in prayer. Now, I've only got a few minutes here, but I will give you this last scripture and then we're going to pray. Watch and pray. This is Matthew 26, 41. This is Jesus. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. I mean, you know, our flesh is weak. We're no match for the master deceiver. 
And I don't say that calling that with reverence. I call him that because that's what he is. He's done it since the beginning of time. He started out right in the garden and he's still doing it today. So we, but how do we overcome that? How do we stand against that? We arm ourselves with, the, with the, the armor of God. We put on the armor of God and we begin to pray. And we stand and when we do that, listen, we can resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. You agree with that tonight? I hope you do. Let's just pray before we get off here. Father, I thank you that you teach us all the time to stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might that we might withstand in this day. Paul wrote that 2,000 years ago or so, and, and he wrote that at that time, and they were having to do the same thing we need to do today. If we'll put on the armor of God and begin to pray with all prayer and, and supplication and in the spirit and with the, with the uh and for the saints and for those around us and for those in authority and all the things, then the gospel can go forth. We pray tonight that we would be witnesses, not just uh, converts, but we'll be disciples and be witnesses unto the goodness of Almighty God that the gospel would go forth. This is what we're called for at this time, Lord. We know that. Help us to all agree with that. Keep our minds off the things that all around us. Oh, sure, we have to do certain things because we do live here, but Lord, uh, help us to be have more of a heavenly-minded idea that we want to see people come into the kingdom and go to heaven and not to the other place. And we thank you for it tonight. Bless everyone in the sound of my voice. Help them to, uh, to stay the course and run the race and finish the course and, and hear those words that it says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So we thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. Thanks for being here tonight. It's an exciting time. Let the Lord shine in your life to bless others. Amen. We'll see you next time.